Welcome to the Leadership Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Jono White. I'm the founder and principal consultant of Clarity. We are an Australian-based consultancy that works with leaders around the world, and our passion is to invest in people to become everything they're meant to be in order to fill the world with healthy organizations that people love to work for and customers line up to buy from. The goal of this podcast is to invest in you and your leadership. If you're just joining us for the first time, then feel free to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there. The most popular being our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from around the world in all different sectors give their in-depth answers on leadership, what books they love, what they found most challenging, uh, the most meaningful stories, how they how they structure their time through the day. That's free, so go and check it out. And we'd love to interview you about your leadership. I believe you have advice from your experience, your context, and your life so far that is important and can help other leaders. It's also a great way to give back. It's free to get involved, and you can do so by going to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest, or just Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form that pops up. We have a free resource for you on our website. It's called Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook. It has interviews with 10 world class leaders, and you can go to consultclarity.org. It's right at the top and get that today. Uh, we also have a daily email that we send out to over 15,000 leaders, and that email contains the highlights, our best content from our podcasts, our blog, uh, my book, uh, the books that we're loving that are out there about leadership. It's also the best way to get access to our masterclasses and workshops before anyone else. And there's also exclusive and limited uh, special options just for subscribers. And you can subscribe by going to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe. Now my gift to you is to work incredibly hard to provide the best leadership content I can to invest in you and your leadership. So if you're finding our content helpful, if you find this podcast helpful, then your gift to me uh, could be this. If you, if you do find it helpful, then write a review or rate our content and make sure you subscribe or follow. I can't emphasize enough how helpful that is. It really does help us to get the word out there so we can invest in more leaders to become everything they're meant to be. It also means a lot to me personally when people like you and people in our community share our content on social media. So if you do that, then please do look for me, Jono White, to tag me and look to tag Clarity uh, on whatever platform you're on. And our team, including me, I, I'm always looking to see when people have mentioned us so that I can engage with you. And also we look at sharing content. So if you if you write something about something we've done, there's also a good chance we'll share that with our followers. So if you could do that, that is a massive, massive help as we try to invest in as many leaders as we can around the world. Last of all, you can check out my book about how to deal with difficult people even if you hate conflict. It's called Step Up or Step Out. It's available on Amazon. You can just look up Step Up or Step Out John O'White or you can go to store.consultclarity.org forward slash book and check it out there. I have coached leader after leader after leader and in more than 50% of the sessions, this topic comes up. How do I deal with this person? I'm finding it really difficult and, and I just want to find a way that doesn't blow up to do a really, just to have a difficult conversation, to lead them better. How do I do that? There's a three-step process that I outline in this book that I believe can help you. Okay, let's get into today's episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Enjoy. Welcome to another episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Today's guest is Kyla Morrison. Kyla is the General Manager, Western Australia and South Australia for Mets Ignited. We're going to hear about that today, which is going to be great. And uh, Kyla is a multi-award winning leader who champions diversity and economic development through her portfolio of roles in the innovation and new energy sectors. Welcome to the podcast, Kyla. Thanks, Jono. Wonderful to have you on and um, uh, another Australian. 
uh, which uh, I always uh, I always say I feel like uh, one of the one of my um, future sponsor dreams is Tourism Australia or Tourism Queensland because I'm always raving about how amazing Australia is. So a little plug there for awesome. you. <laughs> but uh, lovely I have to, to say I do love. Yeah, I have to say I do love where I live. Um, but correct you that I'm a New Zealander, so yes. not quite Australian, but close enough, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, uh, we 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 embrace you wholeheartedly. We love we love New Zealand, but New Zealand arguably even more beautiful than Australia. Yeah, no doubt yeah. there. Different different reasons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to our chat today. Uh, first, can you give our listeners a bit of a a window into what you do with Mets Ignited, but also a, a day in the life of Kyla right now? Yeah, sure. So. I'm six months into a role with Mets Ignited, which is a federal funded industry growth centre. And so the industry growth centres here in Australia were established about six years ago to really foster growth and development in the Australian supply chain in different sectors. So Mets Ignited focuses on mining equipment technology services. So basically uh, Australian startups and vendors operating in that mining technology sector, if you like. What we've found in that time is that a lot of the technology that comes out of um, supplying to mining was also uh, applied to other sectors. So uh, defence, space, marine, um, many other opportunities, even um, ag tech and things like that. So as I mentioned, I'm six months into the role, but I was hired specifically to, number one, uh, be this, uh, build our stakeholder engagement in Western Australia and South Australia, but to also because I'd lived and worked for nine years up in Karatha, which is in northwest Australia, about two hours flight north of Perth. And in that time, developed a women in leadership program and also ran the Chamber of Commerce up there and, and through that role, got involved with the Pilbara University Centre, um, an organisation to support regional education and also asked uh, by local Indigenous businesses to start a Pilbara Indigenous business network. So. It's that theme that's kind of run through right from probably even before university, but definitely uh, honed at university when I was doing engineering and and part of the women in engineering group, uh, is that uh, appreciation and sort of advocacy for minority groups and how we can improve diversity and inclusion in different sectors. So uh, Mm. that's what I'm doing now. I also also have a a director role uh, with a company that has a hydrogen project. So that's why I I call it a portfolio career, if you like. And people can be overwhelmed (laughs) with the number of things I do. But for me, uh, they all come back to, you know, championing, 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 championing. (laughs) <laughs> can't say that word today. Uh, advocating for those minority groups, whether it be uh, women in leadership, um, Indigenous organisations and people, uh, regional people living and working in the regions, um, and, and the list goes on. But those three areas I've had a lot of experience in. Yeah, fantastic. I can't wait to talk more more about that and more about your passion. Uh, and before we hear a bit of your story, you also have an amazing podcast that I really want to encourage uh, people to listen to. Do you want to just talk about that really quickly? Yeah, so uh, we left Karatha in 2019 to move to London. And as I mentioned, I'd started a women in leadership program uh, with a co founder. And the thought of moving to the other side of the world and not doing that program was quite intense. And so off the back of that, we started recording a podcast, which is the Real Women in Leadership podcast. Uh, launched mid-2020, uh, which actually was when we landed back in Australia thanks to COVID. Yeah, that's uh, there are so many stories like that, aren't there? Uh, but wonderful, wonderful podcast, really encourage uh, uh, people to, to listen in, particularly I know there's, I always know because I have so many friends who are um, women in leadership or who, in in my opinion, I always hope that I can get alongside them and encourage them to uh, to step into leadership because they just have so much and like it's it's all over them how how great they manage people and um and so I I love uh, initiatives like yours Kyla that really encourage uh, real women in leadership so yeah make sure people uh, I encourage listeners to check that out let's hear a bit more about you and your story I always love hearing sort of those moments that really shape who we are and and how we end up becoming the people and the leaders we are. Um, So feel free to go back as far as you want and and tell us a bit of 
um, you know, some of those stories that really shaped you becoming Kyla. Yeah, and and I think it's worth going right back as well because I talk to a lot of high school students and people early on in their careers and they'd say, I don't know what I want to do yet. And I'm like, that is fantastic. And fortunately, we live in a world now where it's far more acceptable to have multiple career changes. But for me, I was good at maths and science. In hindsight, I was naturally quite good at mentoring and was actually um, tutoring students in maths way back at school. And my mum was a science teacher, my grandparents were teachers, and I kind of just thought that's where I'd go. I grew up in a small town, 20,000 people in New Zealand, just north of Wellington. And it was only because through a friend whose brother was at university studying engineering that I knew that engineering existed. And so there was there are all those serendipitous moments in people's lives where you might have your eyes open to different opportunities. And for me, that was one of them. So I kind of fell into engineering, if you like, and biomechanical engineering kind of appealed to me at the start of, uh, of my degree until I, again, met someone who lived up in Taranaki and said, why don't you work for Shell? And I was like, Shell, as in the petrol stations? <laughs> he was like, no, Shell as in that gets the oil and gas out of the ground. And I was like, wow, <laughs> cool, never knew that existed. And oh, um, so cool. yeah, again, um, just just sort of, sort of followed my nose. I, my, my boyfriend at the time was living in Taranaki and, and that was how I knew this, this mutual friend. And so it worked out that I did my summer work there finished up uni uh, after doing a master's of engineering management and started my career with Woodside. And uh, so they're an oil and gas company based in Perth, but they have uh, oil and gas operations offshore Australia and overseas as well. So little Kiwi girl, um, you know, moving to Perth straight out of uni, I was like, yes, I'm on my way to, you know, the big OE working overseas sounded more appealing to me than um, the gap year and, you know, self-funding a trip. And so through the drilling and completions department, which is where I started, there was some mm. talk of work in Libya. And whilst that wasn't super exciting, yeah. um, I thought, you know, it's closer to Europe. Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll be able to weather the storm. Um, but I never made it that far. Um, I met a boy in Perth um, after a couple of years, funnily enough, on the graduate program, which we fondly refer to as the Woodside Breeding Program with the number of couples <laughs> that got together oh, and, really? and now have kids in Perth. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, which is which is really nice because going away to Karatha for nine years and then, um, you know, via London, coming back to Perth, we've got a really great network here. Um, but, yeah, moved to the regions and it was kind of there that I realised that I, I felt a bit like a lemming, you know, in the orange overalls or, or the work suit um, going out to the, to the Barrett Peninsula every day. Um, and I, I wasn't progressing down that business strategy, continuous improvement sort of leadership path, which is all the books that I was reading about. Um, I wasn't progressing fast enough in my mind, I should say. And so when I had the opportunity um, on maternity leave um, to think about what I was doing, I actually didn't go back and um, put in my resignation, started a business, started out business coaching and very quickly pivoted into leadership development because that was my yeah. passion area and I realised I could connect back into corporate, which is obviously where I'd started. Then I met Violet and we started the Women in Leadership program. Um, that was very organic, um, but a great probably story to tell. Um, exactly like you said before, a lot of women, often others will see the potential in them before they see it in themselves. And so... It was in 2015, the then CEO of Rio Tinto, Sam Walsh, wrote an article in the West Australian that said, women need to be more confident in the workplace. And so I was doing some public speaking coaching with Violet's husband, um, my co-founder, Violet. And he said, why don't you two run a women in leadership program up in Karatha? And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, very limited professional development opportunities face to face for people in the regions. And so we piloted this program and six years later, we've run it to 14 cohorts to over 200 women. BHP have picked it up and wow. um, have run their first, yeah, have run their first men's program after running it uh, six cohorts in-house. And it's just grown from strength to strength. And I think that that's a great example of doing something that really interests you, but also is strongly aligned to your values because whilst it was 
you know, challenging in the first couple of rounds to get bums on seats, make sure our content landed, mm. um, make sure we were delivering a valuable program and all those types of things. It's never really felt like work, if I <laughs> air quote that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's, yeah, that's been a passion project that's gone, grown on the side. But I have to say um, I, am a, <laughs> I came across this term once, a, a multi-potentialite. <laughs> where like uh, a, a one yeah one career doesn't necessarily one career path or job at one time doesn't necessarily satisfy so yes. um yeah i've i've held a number of roles and i find for me the balance with having a corporate role and my passions on the side which is what i'm doing now through mm-hmm. metsignited as the general manager um i've negotiated to still be able to run the women in leadership programs and i've got my board role and I feel like I've found my sweet spot, you know, with a good balance of of all my different interest areas. I just, I just admire that. And I love that so much. And I think, I think we need to tell young people, there's a few things you said there that I just, that really resonate with me. And this idea that, you know, you talk to 17 year olds and they look at you with pain in their eyes saying, I don't know what I want to do yet. Like it's some sort of big, you talk to 25 year olds and they say that and they feel like they've, they've, they've lost it uh, because they don't know yet. And, right. and I think, you know, for me, it was 28, 29 when I really worked out what I wanted to do um, with cloud, you know, Isn't through clarity. That a beautiful age. Yeah. Yes. I feel like that 28 year old age. Um, I even did a project when I was at 28 because that someone was starting a whole business around mm. um, t- the year of t- turning 28 but yeah that sort of late 20s early 30s a lot of things kind of fall into place and I love the way you say that maybe it's sort of that trust in the process and and if I could suggest anything it's just explore a bit you know take opportunities um talk to different people try things out 100 percent. and I felt that pressure when I was younger and I used to get frustrated at 19 that I um didn't know what I wanted to do. And I felt like I couldn't get, I couldn't make it enough in the work I was doing at the time. And now I look back and I think, oh, if only I'd, I I think it would have been a lot easier (laughs) getting through some of those years if I just realized, you know what, just go and exactly what you said, go and do some things, throw yourself into it and, and realize that that's actually part of the journey. You know, very, you hear yeah. like the one in a million story of someone who, who started their business at 18 and it was a billion dollar business by 24 and you think, oh, if only I could do that. And it's like, well, that's that's not how it yeah. works for 99.99% of people. Um, yeah, so true. that's why I really love I really love your story. I also identify with wanting to do different things. I, I find that that's a big challenge for me with clarity is every time I go to really, I, I love focusing, but at the same time, I'm always thinking I can't help but be doing new things. And I love meeting new people and and talking about new initiatives and new projects. And it's coming to terms with that and realizing um, that maybe some of us, like, like exactly how you described, maybe what it looks like for you in your career to really be loving what you're doing and having a great balance is com- going to be completely different to someone um, in a in a different career. Yeah, one hundred percent. And the great story that I guess I can share along those lines. I when I was in drilling and completions and not one hundred percent satisfied with, you know, love. Yes, the work was really interesting. Working offshore was super cool. You know, two weeks out there and then a week at home um, for periods. But it it didn't feel like it was you know, in hindsight, leveraging my talents and strengths. And so I was looking for other areas and even considered, you know, moving over to marketing and commercial potentially. And my boss at the time is my first manager and I have so much respect and gratitude for the way that he mentored me in those first couple of years and and never suggested that there was a one set path or that, you know, I should be groomed to continue the line that I'd started. And so he encouraged me to talk to uh, other women within Woodside. And I remember sitting down with one of the women we'd done a career expo thing i was part of women on woodside and so i'd found her profile and thought that looks really cool i'll go and talk to her and my my manager had said she must have known what she wanted by you know the steps she'd taken in her career based on this career profile yeah and when we sat down and chat chatted together about it she was like i had no idea i literally just talked to different people i took opportunities that opened and one thing led to another and and so often we do look at that 24-year-old that's a billionaire 
and we or you know that super successful career professional and we try and track their path and look for the formula to follow and that is not life and I think um yeah when when you when you've been there and you realize how much striving you go through in the (laughs) early 20s um to prove yourself and, and make sure you're you know in the right career um when you come back to it and finally realize well when I know more about myself and I leverage the strength that I have then I'll find the right careers to or, or career options to best leverage them. Yeah, a hundred percent. You work a lot with with women in leadership, and I know this is an area that you're really passionate about. Um, for those listening who are particularly for for women who are you know if they're tuning into this podcast, they're probably aware that they're interested in leadership because it's called leadership conversations, but. For those who are leaning in and there's something about you and the work you do where they're going, hmm, maybe, you know, what advice would you give them young or uh, or older about how to, I guess, advice for women to step out in leadership, particularly in some of the sectors like that you have come from where um, where there's still a, uh, there's a lack of equity. Um, what advice would mm. you give to those leaders? Yeah, yeah. Um... Interesting points. Uh, so I, I guess I'll, I'll come back to the sort of the content focus areas that I present in our Women in Leadership program because it was interesting. Um, I've been, I, I have not been nominated for the 40 Under 40 Awards. I nominated myself and a lot of people listening and people that I talk to, and it's really uncomfortable to say you've nominated yourself, um, but people think, oh, you know, that's it's self-promotion and why would you do that? But I found in the awards that I've won um, previously, Telstra Business Women's Award for um, uh, Social Enterprise and Not-for-Profits in WA, and I was actually nominated for the United Nations Gender Equality Award and mm. won that in 2020, which was cool. It's really nice when other people recognise you. <laughs> but yeah. what I've learned is that um, nominating yourself is not a bad thing either because it, it provides that platform to be able to be um, have that additional credibility and have more people listen to you. So, by the by, that that I'm nominated, I nominated myself, I should say, for the 40 under 40. And my mum said how proud she was, um, mm. and that she'd love for my grandparents to be around. Wow. And I I just reflected on that for a moment because I don't ever feel like those words were said to me when I was growing up. I know I was congratulated for when I did well, but I never felt like what I did was enough. And so. And I, wrote, I wrote back to her and I said, oh, you know, I'm re- I love that you, you wrote that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said, on reflection, I've been striving for so long in my life that um, now that I probably follow the principles in the program that we deliver and, and the, the parts that I deliver along the lines of knowing your values um, and, you know, living and working in, in alignment with those, even more importantly for me, and I've mentioned it a couple of times already in the podcast, knowing my areas of strength and and not necessarily focusing on weaknesses that you need to build and fix, but looking at your strengths and thinking about, well, maybe if I overuse or underuse them, that that's my weakness. And if I can find that sweet spot and really leverage my strengths, yeah. then I get into that zone of genius and things become easier. So um, living to your values, leveraging your strengths, and I, I think it's part of um, your core mission is um is having a vision and knowing what what do i want to if when i look back on my life what do i want to be proud for for doing and and being and um and collaborating on in this world and so yeah um advice to women if they're not sure what they're doing i would i would do and i think one of your questions in the prep for this is um what personality tests do you like doing yeah you'd be doing that self-exploration you know um what is it that i love doing where where does work not feel like work? Um, what are my strengths and are they being leveraged um, at work? And if they're not, how can I pivot slightly? I love that. And and are there are there any assessments that you're really loving at the moment or using in your uh, sort of work? Yeah. Uh, so one of the ones that I use in the program is the VIA character strengths. And it's there are a lot of strengths profiles that you can do. There's Strength Finder and, and others. The VIA character strengths is free, so I, I love um, directing people that way. It's also sort of more values based in the strengths that they talk about. There's 24 character strengths, and it, you can you can purchase the reports and things like that and go into more comprehensive detail. But I find 
the more I look into them and the more I align the activities that I do to those strengths, the more I enjoy life and I enjoy my work. So mm. as one of my favorite ones, um, obviously Myers-Briggs is great. I've done Myers-Briggs type two, which was fascinating to get that deeper level of the four types that you are. Um, 16personalities.com is a good sort of cheat for Myers-Briggs if you want to look up your personality along along those lines. Yeah, that's a great and recommendation. Probably, yeah, probably one recently that I um, am, have literally just dipped my toe into but I'm now fascinated by is the Enneagram. And um, I've, I've bought the books. I haven't done any of the courses. I've had my profile done. Um, oh. But, yeah. Every time I open up the book and and dive into that, it's it's multi layered, it's complex, um, super interesting. Yeah, I'm loving Enneagram. Yeah, I I, I love the Enneagram uh, as well. Uh, if I'm not putting you on the spot, do you mind sharing what uh, what type you you think you yeah. might be? Yeah. Yeah. So in my profile um, that I did with a um, executive coach that happened to live across the road in the street that we were on in London, I was like, oh, jackpot. Um, so the profile came out that I was a four wing three, yep. um, which is four. I'll get the name wrong, but it's kind of like the individualist. Um, yeah, yeah, the trait, wants yeah. to be unique. Yeah. Um, but he said, uh, this coach said that I could have easily with the ratings been a seven, which is the visionary. Mm. And, and that just messes with my mind because then I go, well, you know, any self-assessment is sometimes biased because you're answering it based on yourself. Mm. Um, or is it? <laughs> uh, and so, and so then I go, am I seven? Am I four? And so, yeah, I'm tossing, tossing up between the two. Yeah, well, that's and uh, anyone who's listening who hasn't come across Enneagram, I definitely encourage people to check that out. Uh, it, it's a really interesting assessment, and and one of the things I like about Enneagram is they talk about, you know, the importance of wrestling with it yourself, and and over time seeing listening to other people's stories you know reading in depth and, and going so for you actually wrestling with that going am i uh you know am i more uh if, if i remember correctly and i'm not an i'm not an enneagram expert but if i remember correctly the four is is driven by that um uh wanting to be uh unique and in and and then yeah. like there's an element of that whereas the seven is really driven around well, there's there's a motivation around fun and and enjoying things. I'm simplifying it, probably oversimplifying it, but yeah. um. So where yeah. do you feel like that four the four is becoming clearer for you, or do you feel like that 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 desire for because I've got some great really close friends who are sevens and that just um they've done the enneagram discovered that and it's really in, it's it's highlighted for them how um. Uh, yeah, I'm oversimplifying a little bit, but I know for them it's really highlighted that that passion for um, fun, which sounds yeah. For people who haven't come across it, you have got to look into it. But yeah, what about? Do you feel like it's yeah. where have you landed? Yeah, I do. I do think you simplified it a little bit, and it's interesting with personality tests because when you you get into them, you kind of do need to do that really high level. Um, and then dig a bit deeper. I, I literally am not sure. And that's when you go, are you being really honest with yourself when you do the assessment? So for the really cool thing about Enneagram is it talks about, you know, your, oh, I don't think it's your dark side. It's, it's basically, you know, there are times when your personality is not showing up as its best self, if you like. Um, and then there's times yes. when you are in high performance in that zone. And so your your visionary, uh, sorry, yeah, like the seven, the visionary, the one who wants to have fun, who you know um, wants to achieve things. Maybe oh, I'm probably making it up by saying <laughs> manifesting. But anyway, um, you know that person <laughs> might be so intent on on achieving the future goal, and you know, and life is about um, like you say, fun and and bringing people along. That you kind of miss some of the. I haven't looked in the downside as much of, of seven. Maybe I could do more exploration there. But, you know, maybe you're missing some of the detail or, or getting caught up in, in what is pulling you along and you've left other people behind or, or you're not mm. doing the work to, to bring people with you potentially. Yes, um, yeah, and, yeah. And I, I, I definitely can, can be um, see myself aligned with that. For, yeah, they in, in the reading that I've done, they want to be unique. 
but if they don't have a purpose and a, and a reason for doing what they're doing and you know see themselves as, as making a mark on the world in a unique way there can be that sort of depression and and low mood and I've I felt that mm-hmm. over different years, particularly sure. when I had kids. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, this is not what I thought life was like, you know, <laughs> um, having kids and working. It's not the role models that I grew up with in my life. And <laughs> there was a lot of self-reflection on that. And I think that pull back to some kind of a corporate role um, mm. was there. And I had to go through the dark times to get that clarity or contrast of what I did really want. So yeah. Yeah, I can't answer whether I'm four or seven. I need to do more work on that, more reading. Well, I think we've got um, a new podcast idea, which is Jono and Kyla uh, wade <laughs> wade through the Enneagram with, um, yeah, awesome. minimal, awesome. with a little tiny bit of knowledge and a lot of trying to work it out on air. Um, so if you're keen for that, I reckon yeah. we launch that next week. <laughs> <laughs> because I, awesome. it is it's a deep one isn't it so may you've got me thinking about getting an any um if anyone out there knows it a real expert on enneagram i'd love to have them on as well because it's yeah it's yeah, um it's worth exploring thank you for letting me do that little segue <laughs> the kyla um yeah. that was uh but that that's so helpful uh I would, what I want to do is I just want to jump into Leadership Express, but I've, I've loved this so much. And really today, I feel like this is a part one. You know, I just feel like we could chat for another um, hour around uh, women in leadership and, and the things you're really passionate about. So I'd love to invite you to come back again, Kyla, and, cool. and we love can next back. time, yeah. now that we've introduced you, next time we can delve a bit more into um, some of your stories as a, as a woman stepping out in leadership in some of the sectors that I really wanted to get to. Um, but got uh, distracted by the Enneagram and just loved hearing you unpack that. So um, there's the there's the invitation. We'll do that. So everyone look out for part two down the track. But let's just um, let's just wrap up by jumping through a few questions. You ready? Yeah. Okay. What's a book that you've gifted to other people around leadership or life? So I was going to give an answer, but because we didn't really talk about the sectors I've worked in, I'm going to choose another book called Maverick. Uh, it inspired that my business name is about a, uh, a guy who runs a company in South America taken over from his father, which was quite hierarchical in the organisational structure and the way it was run. He flips it on his head. Um, Ricardo Semler is the author, and I highly recommend looking up his TED Talks about looking at a different way of teaching um, children and running organisations. Wonderful. Great recommendation. Uh, what is a great piece of advice you've received from someone in your life? Oh, um, maybe along the lines of the, you may not always end up where you thought you were going, um, but you'll always be where you're meant to be. Ooh, I like that. That's good. A movie or TV show that really impacted you? Um, I really liked, uh, t- keeping on the women in leadership theme, I really liked Self Made. The, I think it's a four-part series about the um, American, black American woman who started that um, beauty product business for um, hair care. Yep, inspirational. Amazing. Okay, I love that. It's a great recommendation. Uh, if you could only give one piece of leadership advice to a young leader, what would you say? Ooh, one piece. Um... <laughs> And that's a hard one. Yeah. One piece. Oh, I was going to go back to the strengths, but what's coming to me is that you are enough. Stop trying to prove yourself. You're there because someone else believed in you. Yeah, that's good. And last question, what's the best thing you're doing at the moment as, as a leader, you know, at METS or in, at, on, the, on the board in different places that other leaders should know about? Oh, doing well. Obviously, um, head over to the Real Women in Leadership podcast if you want to hear from my um, co-host Violet, who's a communications expert, and myself having conversations um, and interviewing uh, guest experts. The cool thing that I'm doing, like what I feel really proud of, is uh, we we run grant funding programs, um, accelerator and masterclass programs, and I'm I'm starting to find my voice to ask those difficult questions of organisations that have no female represented representation at board or exec level, mm. you know, on a call where I feel like I'm new to the team and one of the youngest, 
I'm, yeah. ask, I'm still asking those questions. Well, I'm finding the confidence to ask those questions. What are you doing in the diversity and inclusion space? And, you know, one great answer yesterday was from a company that um, have a lot of um, people ex um, the military forces and mm -hmm. they support veterans getting into work. And I was like, fantastic. Like diversity mm -hmm. is not just male and female. And, and so that's what I'm passionate about. And that's what I am um, proud to say that I'm making a difference in at the moment. Yeah, that's been a real common thread uh, through today, and I've really enjoyed that, encouraging people to work out what you're really passionate about and not be afraid to stand up for that. And and even yeah. even dealing with that imposter syndrome and with that, uh, sometimes I think that sort of false humility where you go, oh, I don't want to make a big deal about myself. And going, actually, you know, there's an element of good humility in that, but then there's also sometimes you need to put yourself forward and put a foot forward about the area you're really passionate about for the sake of people that you want to see lifted up. And I think that was, I think you articulated that really well. Uh, it was great yeah, exactly. that you mentioned. One, just, yes, go. Sorry, one thing on that. Um, I, at one point I came up with this, um, across this quote that said, who are you not to stand up and lead? And I thought, wow, you know, that takes the, the, self, the self spotlight away from you that you've mm. got these unique gifts to to help others and lead others who are you not to stand up and lead yeah that's great and a great place to to sort of wrap up you've already mentioned the podcast but just again so people can can find you where can people uh, find you online kyla yep real women in leadership podcast with kyla morrison and violet Jew, or on linkedin i'm really active over there so jump on linkedin connect with me kyla morrison wonderful well, uh, thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Today has been so much fun, and honestly, that half an hour felt like three minutes. So I'm, <laughs> I, that's why I, I, I made a big deal of mentioning part two because I, I really enjoyed today. I know listeners will have gotten a lot out of it. And uh, don't forget, you can catch uh, the John O. White Leadership Podcast, which is more uh, just me giving some tips on vision and leadership and, and managing people and well-being, and the leadership question of the day, where I ask a different question every day to put a stone in your shoe as a leader uh, but I just want to finish today by saying a massive thank you to Kyla for joining me and and uh, and and just going on our um, interesting path of conversations, but sharing your story. And I I found it really inspirational. Um, and I know listeners will too. I think there'll be people who've listened to this and then jump out of the car or out of bed or speed up a bit in their in their run and and take things on because I I found chatting with you really inspirational. So thank you so much, Kyla. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Jono. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast as much as I did. If you're joining us for the first time, don't forget to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there, including our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from all over the world in all different roles, in different industries, answer these seven questions on leadership and leaders give these in-depth answers around how they spend their time, uh, a book that's been significant for them. It's just a gold mine. It's completely free to access. So go to consultclarity.org and look for that. We'd also love to interview you about your leadership. I believe your experience, your life, your context means that you have advice on leadership that other leaders can learn from. Yes, you, if you're going, not me. Well, no, I really believe you would have something to add. So if you're looking for a way to give back, it's completely free to get involved. And we would love to interview you through the seven questions on leadership. You just go to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest or Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form and get involved. We have a free resource on our website called the Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook, 10 world-class leaders giving their thoughts on leadership and that's completely free. It's available on our homepage consultclarity.org right at the top. So make sure you go and get that and download it today. And we have a free daily email that you can subscribe to. We send this out to over 15,000 leaders from around the world. And uh, it contains the highlights of content from our podcasts, our blogs, um, our books, books we're reading. It's got the best content. 
and it gives you exclusive limited early access to our masterclasses, workshops, new products, special offers. It's all for our subscribers. You can go to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe and join 15,000 other leaders. And you know, my gift to you is to work really hard, particularly through the Leadership Conversations podcast. I have been blown away by the quality of the leaders and I'm learning as much as anyone in doing these interviews. So I, I'm having a great time. And my gift to you is to keep lining up the best leaders I can to invest in your leadership. Your gift to me, if you're finding this helpful, there is something that you could do that would help us out massively. And that is to write a review and to leave a rating for our podcast or wherever you're watching or listening to this. I can't tell you how much that helps us out. Also subscribe or follow. It really does make a difference in helping us to help more leaders become everything they're meant to be. Another thing that means a lot to me personally is when I see our community share our content. So if you do share this or any other piece of content on social media, then thank you and, and please do that. And look for me, John O. White, or clarity and tag us in your post. Our team is always looking for posts to engage with from our community. And there's also a chance that we'll share your content uh, to go beyond and share it with our followers. Last of all, you can check out my book. It's called Step Up or Step Out, How to Deal with Difficult People Even If You Hate Conflict. I wrote this book because 50% of the coaching sessions I have with leaders, this topic comes up again and again and again. And it's this idea of how do I have this difficult conversation? How do I lead this person better when I'm finding them difficult? Or in some cases, you look and you say, I think I might be leading a difficult person. They're just quite difficult to lead or I'm finding them quite difficult to lead. So there's a three-step process that I unpack in Step Up or Step Out. And the amazing thing, and I've literally done this myself and I've heard it anecdotally from other leaders as I've coached them, is that if you follow this process, you will see that person step up and change their behavior or make a decision, which is to step out some of the time. 95% uh, of the time, people will step up or step out in just four weeks. And I stand by that. It's uh, You have to read the book to understand, but uh, I really do believe in it and I've experienced it firsthand. It works. So you can go to Amazon, look up Step Up or Step Out John O. White or store.consultclarity.org forward slash book. Well, thank you so much for listening. We're going to be back with a new episode next time of the Leadership Conversations podcast. And I hope today has helped you to take another step towards becoming the leader you're meant to be. See you next time. 